the later Odibo youth movement. I also welcome each and every one of us, all the members of Save Nigeria Project who come from different parts of this country to witness the today's event where a major decision has been taken by all the strata of this nation. Today's program is not, did not start today. It's a product of several consultations brainstorming with all the stakeholders in Nigeria projects. And today is the day set aside to communicate to the world the major decision which have been taken after the several consultation. Today, the Save Nigeria project will introduce to the world those decisions, those information, and those conclusions derived from the several consultation. In a, a press conference, which will be read to the members of the public, to the Nigerians and the world at wide, by the coordinator of Save Nigeria Project, Mr. Peter Aban. I will also like to run down the program of the event. We have welcomed the delegates, we've said the open prayer, and we have also introduced the members of the high table. We will start with a brief speech by the APC Young Professionals Movement, ably represented by Comrade Emeka Ikebe. Thank you, the moderator. All protocols duly observed. I thank everybody that is here today for this uh, event. And um, just as we know, it's a Nigerian project. And uh, what we are here today to do is to make a statement of what we stand with respect to the future of this country, the future of our generation, and the future of our children. So as young professionals of the APC movement, and persons in the ruling party who believe in merit more than anything, and with the understanding that in politics, issues of ethnicity and tribe play major roles, we have therefore agreed that the best choice for the present for this country come 2023 should be, should be, for emphasis, a thoroughbred professional, a technocrat par excellence, who understands the vision, the mission, and the objectives of the president, and a man from the Igbo extraction, who is also from the South South for the purpose of unity, progress, and continuity. The choice is perfect, and we have no choice than to make the choice, and it's the perfect and the most perfect of the class. He has put his professionalism to test, and has passed very well with exceptional and wonderful scores. He has been on the job at the highest level for almost eight years and has acquitted himself honorably and dedicatedly. Gentlemen and ladies, I will stand here to tell you that many countries in the past and even currently have gone through down this path that we are going today and have elected professionals and particularly economists who have brought about quick, progressive, and impressive economic growth and development 
in those countries. And also brought about quick acceleration to unity. Gentlemen, Nigeria cannot miss this golden opportunity that we have today. Canada, I can give you examples. Japan, Australia, Czech Republic, India, and some other countries have also taken this part that we are trying to take today. And I encourage everybody to key in into these principles. Gentlemen and ladies, men of the press, all the stakeholders, Nigeria cannot miss this opportunity, I state again, to elect our best hands and our own renowned economists to drive our country to where it is desired to be at this very particular time. That man who we have searched out and unveiled to you today will excite you all and we urge you to throw in your weight, your support, and all you can for the future of this country. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen, once again, and remain blessed. Well done. A bigger round of applause. The young professionals have spoken and Nigerians are hard. Without wasting time, may I call on Wadibu Chidima is care to give a brief speech on behalf of the Igbo youth movement. Nde wono We the member groups of the Save Nigerian project have carefully assessed and thoroughly analyzed of the situation the country set goals. The aspirants that have either declared or presently consulting preparatory to eventual declaration have come to the definite conclusion that the interest of peace, equity, justice, and fairness, that the next president of Nigeria has to come from the Igbo extraction, either from the southeast or the south-south. Nigeria owes this to the Igbo race. Since the end of the war, the Igbo have contributed greatly to the growth and the development of the country and shown and should be shown a sense of belonging by the rest of the world. Ndi Igbo have an array of aspirants and also eminently qualified men and women from among whom to choose. However, we have put forward our best foot so that Nigerians will look back with pride in future and th that they listen to us in the Igbo and accepted our choice and result of our selection. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Give Mwada Igbo Chedema a very, very big round of applause. Yes, this is the time. This is the time to present to you the coordinator, the national coordinator of this project called, called Save Nigeria Projects. Comrade Peter Amban to deliver the speech as agreed by the members of this project to deliver to the people the outcome of several months of consultation and brainstorming and visitation to 
different persons who are stakeholders of this Nigeria project. Without wasting much of our time, I call on Mr. Peter Aban to deliver the World Press speech to Nigeria and to the viewers worldwide. Thank you. Gentlemen of the press, you're all welcome to today's hour. As the first quarter of the year 2022 draws to a close, and the 2023 general election gets even closer, activities of various players in the polity get heightened, and as in one way or the other, affected the country. It is in furtherance of the discharge of our duties as watchers of the civil space who have resolved to give our all for the prosperity of Nigeria and the benefit of all Nigerians that we have set out to make our own contributions in assessing the state of the nation and calling for the way forward and working towards the Nigeria of our collective dreams. Nigeria has been on a steady march towards development. President Muhammad Dubari, GCFR, since 2015, has ensured that the country has recorded more infrastructural growth than any other time in our history. Railways in Nigeria are now working. For instance, the Lagos to Ibadan, Abuja to Kaduna, Itape. Ajaokuta to worry are all completed and running. Why the Ibadan to Kano, Lagos to Calabar, Port Harcourt to Meduguri are at various stages of construction and completion. Several roads are also being constructed and reconstructed, as well as bridges, including the Second Niger Bridge, the Loko to Iweto Bridge maintenance of the third mainland bridge, the Ecom bridge, the Muritala bridge, the Tatapu bridge, the Isaac Moro bridge, and so many others. The unprecedented revolution in the agricultural sector cannot be overemphasized in discussing the state of the nation today. Until President Muhammad Bari came into power, no Nigeria had ever seen massive pyramids built with rice paddy. Nigeria was never rated as a global producer of rice before 2015, but now had become a super force in global rice production and no longer a dumping ground for unhealthy spoiled rice that comes from China and other parts of the world. Other crops have been cultivated in commercial quantities, including tomatoes, sugar, onions, vegetables, and yams, which are now being exported with the, with the positive impact of foreign exchange end. Under President Muhammad Bwari, the National Assembly have, enab has enabled, have been ab enabled to pass several laws which have the capacity to improve the lots of Nigerians. For instance, the Petroleum Industry Act, the Finance Act, the Companies and Allied Matters Act, and the Electoral Act, which have been passed into law and signed by the President with enormous contributions from him. Without these laws in place, lives and system in Nigeria would have been unimaginably unbearable. The NNPC has been unbounded and its activities made more transparent and accountable. Several initial hitches being witnessed by way of fuel shortages are very temporary and will soon be a thing of the past. On the economic front, we note that latest figures from the National Bureau of Statistics 
show that inflation is going down. This shows a positive trajectory and recovery for the economy. Through the various social intervention programs, now domiciled in the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, the federal government has lifted millions, I say millions, out of penury and joblessness into economic productivity and prosperity. The economy has also expanded and fortified against global shocks. In record time, beating the projection of financial experts, the country has a zitted recession. I think the president deserves a round of applause. Available data also show the economic growth, which is more than the projection. It is obvious this expert limits the capacity of President Muhammad Dubwari, Mr. Godwin Emefile, and other current hands engaged by the president to drive the economy of the country. It is in view of this favorable assessment of our country's leadership and the state of the nation this first quarter of 2022 that we as civil society organizations pass a vote of confidence on President Muhammad Buhari, his economic agenda and the monetary policies of the State Bank of Nigeria, ably led by Mr. Godwin Ifan Ichuku Emefiele. He also deserves a round of applause, please. On the, on the 2023 general election, it is our well-considered view that the signing of the 2022 Electoral Act by Mr. by Mr. President is a major testament that the President does what he says. He keeps to his promises and honors his words as they are his bonds. Nigeria will recall that President Muhammad Buhari had promised that he will bequeath the nation with a electoral, a far better electoral atmosphere and process than he met. He fulfilled that, pro that process or that promises by the signing of the new electoral act. The novel introduction and amendments into that act makes room for the 2023 general election to be a model for all. This could only have been done by President Muhammadu Buhari. It must be noted that an array of politicians from various political parties have indicated interest to occupy the exalted seats of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Many others are still consulting why there are others being prompted by cross-section of Nigerians to indicate interest and run for the office. While we applaud the All Progressive Congress, APC, for zoning power to the South, we call on all political parties to emulate the APC and also zone power to the South in the interest of peace, equity, fairness, and inclusiveness. Power rotating to the south at this time is most desirable and a panacea for several agitations and cries of marginalization across the country. Bearing this in mind and ensuring that the country by 29th May 20 has a president that will continue, consolidate and expand the visions and landmark legacies of President Muhammadu Buhari that we call that the choice of the president should be a core loyalist, not just verbally, but in action. A professional to the core in his field of endeavor. A person whose candidature will answer perennial questions, like quenching the quest for the Igbo to 
be president of Nigeria and satisfying the push for the South-South to complete their one outstanding term. It has to be a person who has been with the president and who understand where the president wants this country to be in the nearest future. It has to be a tested and competent technocrat, a person who is detribalized, broad-minded, generally acceptable, and a believer in the unity and oneness of Nigeria. He must be a patriot who has been part of the success stories recorded and ready to sustain them. He must not be controversial and must be very accommodating for our country's diversity. Our resolution is in the interest of the country first before any other reason. History is replete with records that when nations desire economic growth and accelerated development, they enthrone their great economists, financial experts, who help them overcome their challenges and achieve their set national goals. For instance, Canada elected Stephen Harper as Prime Minister in 2006, and his tenure is still a reference point till this day. The debt to GDP ratio was reduced to the all-time best level. Italy, in its own time of mid, elected Mario Ponti as Prime Minister in 2011. And he laid a strong foundation for the resilient economy of Italy till this day. Australia, in its own, Australia elected its own renowned economics. Tony Abbott, as Prime Minister, he expanded opportunities in his country and made huge positive changes to their balance of trade. Let's talk about India. India elected Man Mohan Singh, a globally acclaimed economist who led the country to a speedy development from 2004 to 2014. Today, more than 75% of the global IT companies and other technologically based companies are run by Indians. Nigerians may not know that our countrymen spend billions of Naira annually on medical tourism. The foundation for these achievements was laid down by this economist, Man Mohan Singh. Japan elected their own great economists Junichiro Koizumi in 2004 and that era and that was the era the country witnessed the highest GDP growth among the G7 countries of the world. Greece in 2011 elected its former central bank governor Lucas Dimitrios Papademos who stayed the country out of the, very, the, the, the famous Greek crisis. Today, their economy is yet again rebounded, and the, con the citizens are happy that they elected him in their time. Czech Republic elected Vlakas, Vlakav Klaus, a, professional, a professor of finance, to help it turn, turn the tide, and for 10 years, from 2003 to 2013, he spearheaded the economic growth of the country. In Africa, Egypt and Somalia have also done something similar. Following the near collapse of the Egyptian economy after the Arab Spring, Egypt elected Hazim El Berbawi in 2013 as the Prime Minister and in less than a decade, their economy is stable. Their depreciating currency is reversed and growing, and citizens are engaged in their lawful activities and, the, and living the good life. Why, despite all the turbulence faced by Somalia, they are able today to be a country and their economy has not totally collapsed and is thriving because of the performance of Abdiweli Sheikh Hamad. Who 
has salvaged the country after famous wars and economic downturn. All these countries elected their renowned economists when the time was right, and today they are economically stable, developed, and flourishing. We therefore call on President Muhammadu Buhari as the father of modern Nigeria to support a candidate who embodies a winnable personality, who ticks all the numerous boxes, and the candidate whom he would be proud of. It is a vigorous search that we have come to the unequivocal and emphatic conclusion that only one man fits this description. I will make bold to present to Mr. President for his endorsement and to Nigeria for their massive support to Mr. Godwin Ifan Yichuku Emefiele, the Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria for President 2023. Mr. Emefiele has shown unprecedented sagacity as governor of the country's central bank. His initiatives for small, medium, and large-scale enterprises have been unprecedented in manufacturing, oil and gas, agriculture, trade and commerce. The signature of the CBN governor has been very clear and precise. The numerous interventions of the bank under high standard supervision is second to none. Rice farmers in our country had never had it so good in their entire history. Furthermore, the initiative of the bank to encourage Nigerians into exportation to repatriate their foreign exchange earnings is better than the bookmakers could have imagined. Several other strategic policies to ensure foreign exchange liquidity in the country are worthy of note and are being copied and implemented by other countries. These are initiatives of the CBN. And I think, again, the CBN, deserve, the CBN governor deserves a resounding round of applause, please. Thank you very much. Nigerians may need to know and be reminded that on more than one occasion, the CBN governor has stirred the country out of economic recession at a time which defied the projections of best foreign experts. It could have only taken a man with such in-depth understanding of the issues and a deep analytical mind to achieve such feats. In the area of tackling unemployment, the CBN has 37 intervention funds targeted at stimulating the economy and addressing the issue of unemployment. When Mr. Emefiele came into office in 2014, banks' credit to private sector was 16.96 billion, 16.93 billion. But that figure had today grown by one, almost 100% to over 32.64 billion. This increase was driven by the loan to deposit ratio policy introduced by Mr. Emefiele, specifically under the Anchor Borrowers Program. The Apex Bank had granted over 756 billion naira to more than 3 million farmers cultivating more than 4.6 million hectares of land. I think he also deserves a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The initiative of the bank include agribusiness, small and medium enterprise investment scheme with over 121 billion naira disbursed to over 32,000 beneficiaries. Targeted credit facilities with over 318 billion naira released to over 675 
thousand beneficiaries comprising of families and the SMEs. Under the National Youth Investment Fund, three billion naira has been released to over 7,000 beneficiaries, while under the Creative Industry Finance Initiative, over 3 billion was released to over 350 beneficiaries. These were all to the movie production, software development, movie distribution, fashion, and the likes. Also, under the 1 trillion Naira real sector facility, over 250 real sector projects have benefited from the over 900 billion Naira already released. On the 100 billion Naira healthcare sector intervention facility, over a, over a hundred healthcare projects in pharmaceuticals and hospital service services were beneficiaries. Why the intervention in the mass metering programs where it disbursed over 36 billion to 17 meter assets prov providers will begin to yield results soonest. Over 620,000 direct and indirect jobs were created in two years as a result of the bank's intervention in cotton, textile, and garment sector. In total, the bank's development finance intervention in general have created 7 million jobs. 7 million jobs. This is the highest by any central bank governor in our history and indeed by any singular institution ever in the country. Though Mr. Emefiele has not formally declared to run for the office as he is still concentrating on his job and understandably too at the Apex Bank. We therefore urge Mr. President to immediately begin to immediately call on him to begin public presentation of himself and to all citizens so as to ensure that the message is spread appropriately. I take this again and for emphasis to show that this is the resolve of the Save Nigeria project, I will stand and make this pronouncement. We urge on the president to call on Mr. Godwin Emefiele to begin a public presentation of himself to all citizens to ensure that the message of Godwin Emefiele 2023 is spread across board. If you believe with me, if you stand with me, let us give this a round of applause, please. Thank you very much. Now, on activities of desperate politicians ahead of 2023 election, the Save Nigeria project will also take this advantage of this briefing to alert the world that activities of desperate politicians to alert the world of the activities of desperate politicians ahead of 2023 general election. We have been approached and we believe many other credible groups in Nigeria have also been approached by some desperate politicians of questionable character with a pool of funds of up to $1 million. To be yes, of up to $1 million. To be allegedly shared by consenting groups for a massive smear campaign against the president, against the person of the president, his economic agenda, and the person and office of Mr. Godwin Emefiele and his office in the CBN. We have outrightly rejected that offer. Nigerians should note that once this condemnable project starts, 
they should disregard it and treat them with the disdain they deserve. The modus operandi will include that the leadership of the groups will be cloned and impersonated. Lies and misrepresentation of facts will be the common denominator, while they will feature prime time and front pages, as the funding will be quite heavy. What is she? Finally, we call on Nigerians at home and in the diaspora to key into this choice of Mr. Godwin Emefiele and also to call on all leaders of note in our country who have the president's ear to also lend their voice to this generational opportunity to massively grow our economy in leaps and bounds and also generally move Nigeria forward on the front of justice, equity, and fairness. Forward ever, backward never. Long live the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you. Thank you, the last lack of the letter. The message is very loud and clear. The message is direct and simple that the Mr. President should urge the Central Bank Governor, Mr. Ifa Ichiku Methene, to step out for 2023 presidency of this country. Before I summarize the takeaway from this wonderful speech, I'll call on Olivia Eze, the spokesperson of Larger Data Youth Vanguard, for her own speech. All protocols duly observed. Good morning, beautiful ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for taking out your time to gather here today to listen to us. It means a lot. The Niger Delta Youth Vanguard is in agreement that what Nigeria needs in 2023 is a president that will satisfy the joint quest for the Southeast and the South-South to be president at the same time. While we note that the South-South was not allowed to complete its term under good luck, Ebele Jonathan, and also understanding the quest for the Igbos to produce a president for the very first time, we are in agreement that a ticket that satisfies this joint demand will do Nigeria great good. It is in acceptance of this fact that we have agreed after series of negotiation and patriotic search that a Niger Delta of Igbo origin and who particularly is eminently qualified will unify the votes of both zones and guarantee victory for the candidates. That man who fits these bills has been identified and will be unveiled here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. The man has been unveiled today. And the message, as I said earlier, is very clear. 
Jareth, and this will bring us to the end of this World Press Conference organized by Save Nigeria Project. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again. Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.